So this is why I decided to learn a keyboard layout called Dvorak. So there's QWERTY and there's a bunch of other directions, or other, other standards, right? So this keyboard, so that keyboard is QWERTY, which is standard. That's normal. That's how we're kind of used to it, right? And um, I've learned how to do Dvorak. So the first letters up here don't spell QWERTY. The top row has characters instead. So it's got quotes, less than, greater than, dy, and then on the home keys for your left hand, you actually have all the vowels, a, o, e, u, i. Why on earth would I retrain my fingers on typing this way? Well, it's actually pretty easy. So one of the things that I've wanted to do is become more proficient as, um, not just as a developer, but just someone who has to use the computer. Um, and simply put, I never learned how to touch type. Um, if you see me developing or you've seen me um, uh, like on a computer, I, when I'm typing, I'm about 25 words per minute, 26 words per minute. And then and I'm looking like looking down, right? Touch the keys. Uh, 28 sometimes if I'm, if I'm really lucky. 28 words per minute. So that's that's how slow I am. And I'm looking down, you know, to, to actually do it. I never learned how to touch type. I was actually um, one of the last years in school where um, there wasn't a required class because, you know, penmanship was going to be a thing. So anyways, I decided to learn how to touch type and become more proficient. And I thought one of the best ways to train our muscle memory was to do a orth orthorlinear grid style um, keyboard. And the reason why is because if they're not staggered, so your muscle memory is going to feel different, right? You feel like you're, you're, you're just pressing a different command center, control panel, right? It's just totally different. There's no correlation between that keyboard and this keyboard. Um, and then each item is just within one, and then each key is just within it's just within one distance, um, you know. And there was a YouTube video that I think did an excellent job convincing me. Uh, if I find it, I'll put it down in the link below. So I'd like to take a moment here and just point out that this guy is doing beautiful production value. Uh, staggered keyboards, most of us can type on those. Is it worth reprogramming your mind and your, your muscles to use ortho linear is it is the benefit worth that investment of your, your but effort? so that youtube video convinced me and after some arduous um, amount of debating i decided yep i'm gonna learn it i'm gonna learn this ortho linear keyboard that i can custom do layouts and as long as i'm doing it i'm gonna learn dvorak because it actually um is easier on my fingers so one thing i started to notice was that when you do um, touch type and I was using typingclub.com and like some other ones around the, the, the net. Um, and basically what ended up happening is I noticed that, um, like my fingers is like kind of hurt. Like I kind of put like some strain on them and I was kind of surprised because of how my fingers had to reach a lot. And so when I saw this video that explained the ortholinear keyboard benefit, um, and then I knew Dvorak, one of the ideas, that one thing comment that I was seeing over and over was that people were complimenting that it, it has, maybe some people were forced into learning it because uh, QWERTY was starting to hurt their hands or they were starting to develop, you know, damage. And the way I see it is, you know, I, I do a lot with my hands. So it's, it's pretty important that, you know, um, I can keep working with them as, as best I can. So, um, so with that, I basically decided to learn Dvorak, and um, and I was correct. The ortholinear layout did make it easy for me to rewire my brain about like, okay, cool, like this is how we're gonna type and whatever. And then because I was building this this keyboard, um, I ended up doing additional custom layers. But that's a separate video. We'll talk about that later. Some people learn Dvorak because they're trying to increase their speed. Um, I was trying to do that too, frankly. I wanted to, you know, be a faster typist. Um, cause 25 words per minute, 26, not that great. Um, and I knew I was, I was writing a lot and specifically when I was coding, I was using all those special symbols too. Right. And it's just, the layout is just so random and funky. I'm going up and down and whatever. And when I decided to make, 
to, to learn Dvorak, one of the benefits was that some of those special keys, I think, were set up in a more natural kind of location. So if you're typing a sentence or if you're writing some code, um, there's some, you know, sometimes it's a little bit easier in my, my brain to just kind of see that Dvorak keyboard layout um, because it's, it's kind of like a fresh new take on it. Um, and now there are other keyboard layouts people can learn. Um, uh, Colmac is another one. And I did a fair bit of research because, you know, if you're going to commit to this, like you're going to commit. Um, and when you get a keyboard like this, um, and you're not used to spending money, um, for stuff like you're, you're, you're making a commitment that you're going to be more efficient. Um, and that, you know, you're going to be investing in the tools you use, right? Like if you're a carpenter, it's like, yeah, you could, you know, use a saw, like a hand saw, but, you know, why not invest in, you know, something that makes your job easier, right? Your, your, um, your tool set is just going to make you more efficient with what the knowledge you already have, right? The carpenter, um, is no better a carpenter because of a saw versus a circular saw, um, but rather he's more efficient with the circular saw. And in my opinion, it's the same thing with your keyboard is that, you know, if you need to press keys or, or type words, or you have to press special symbols, like you will be able to do that because you'll, you'll know what that that's what you need to do as far as syntax goes. So anyways, and the other thing too, is, um, I, one thing I recognized was I wanted to, you know, be able to just move around the screen easier using only the keyboard as much as possible. Um, because that's what we see in movies, right? We see in the movies, like they're navigating around the screen, um, from the command line, or they're just like, know all the hotkeys to jump between things and whatever. And, uh, that's what, we, you know, it's just more efficient. It's faster than like, the mouse right and so that's like the next step in what i wanted to do um but dvorak takes me you know pretty far as a developer before even adding my custom layers which you know come later so the obvious question is you're going to ask yourself is you're looking at this video you're researching this topic because you're wondering should i learn dvorak and the truth is my situation was i was trying to become more efficient and um and it was it, it is hard to jump back and forth initially between qwerty and dvorak and you want to just jump to your qwerty keyboard because you gotta get messages out you get you're doing your job you got to be working right um but at the same time um you recognize that it's actually you know when you're trying to learn the muscle memory like you got to be actively just putting in the practical time and with that, you basically need to be willing to do this sort of frustrating, slow process for, you know, a few weeks. I would say within um, two and a half weeks, you're more comfortable with the keyboard. And then, um, you know, past that, it's just sort of the normal learning curve of just how fast you type. Now, how fast do I type? I now can get about 28 words per minute on Dvorak, uh, which is slightly faster um, and slightly more convenient than the QWERTY. Um, but I'm doing things to make myself even faster than that. Um, because one thing that I like, for example, is on the keyboard I have is I can do an auto shift. So I can hold down a key a little bit longer and it'll be capitalized. And essentially I can train my brain so that, you know, um, not to hold the keys for too long because they'll be capitalized. But if I want a key to be capitalized, I can hold it down just for the moment, the thought um, that I hold down the key so that it'll be capitalized for me. I've actually already have done this, pro uh, this process and have noticed that I started jumping back to my QWERTY keyboard because I was becoming more comfortable and proficient typing, but pressing the, the holding down the key was for, for too long for me now because I was getting faster. So I switched and, um, and so I've been kind of tweaking the speed at which I need to hold down the key and release it to make it capitalized versus just pressing the key to have the lowercase version. So that's something that I've been able to, to do and I'm in the process of to get even faster, but also to make me more proficient because um, you know, those modifier keys take extra effort and, and work to, to think about or whatever. Um, 
once again, this is just me and how I've been set up. Um, I also didn't know how to touch type. So um, I wasn't trying to undo a lot of QWERTY um, knowledge from years. I was always looking at my keys. And there's a difference between when you're looking at the keys and typing versus not looking at the keys and, um, and, and typing. Um, you, can, you, you, you go into two different, different mindsets. But my biggest tip would definitely be to, you know, um, go to a couple of websites where you can practice typing, use it in your daily, daily life as you normally would to just throw out your keyboard and just, you know, commit to Dvorak um, or whatever layout is you're going to be using. Um, and um, my biggest selling hint point is you're going to have to have a different type of keyboard. And I think the author linear gives you a lot of like fresh space to work in because tactically it will feel different and you'll be training your brain to be tact uh, tactically feeling anyways right so you really uh, can benefit from having that author linear layout um and then you know uh if you have a different key type um so that you know like the the push um is different than your than your other keyboard that works anything that tactically will make it feel different and one thing i did initially is i did actually on my QWERTY keyboard, get these little itty bitty stickers on Amazon. So I was able to redo the Dvorak layout and um, just put it right there on my keyboard. We'll show a shot of that, um, but just put it right there directly in my keyboard. And that's how I was able to kind of like look down and see it, but not be like overpowering. I can kind of toggle between the two modes because in Windows, you can do that. You can set the different, um, you can set the different uh, keyboard layouts.